Hey everyone, my name is Norre and I wanted to tell you a little bit about my song called Behind the Sun, which is the second track on my new album, I Am Weary, Don't Let Me Rest. The album is out now, you can listen to it wherever. Uh, and let's just quickly dive into it. So, um, as you can see, it is an incredibly simple song. So these are the stems, the core elements of the songs of the song and we've got strings bass keys and special effects uh, special effects are made of two components I'll get into that later but by far the most important part here are the strings and this is just the string orchestra that that really carries this track and I thought we could actually uh, look at the score a tiny bit here um, so um, we can maybe listen to the beginning a little bit. Just the strings. And it starts very quiet. As you can see, pianissimo. And what I'm writing here, poco a poco crescendo sino al forte on rehearsal mark A, meaning just it gets gradually, um, yeah, the dynamics are increasing gradually until forte which is on rehearsal mark a which is right here um, we're not there yet the cello has entered now it's the same dynamic marking So, um, the idea behind this composition is so incredibly simple. Um, each voice of the orchestra, uh, except for the second viola, which I recorded separately, hence why it's down here, uh, just because I didn't, I had four viola players and I just wanted that full sound, so I just decided to record it separately to get the illusion of a, of a slightly bigger orchestra. Um, so the basses that start, it's really simple. It's just like, a, uh, yeah, it's it's a number routine, whatever you want to call it. It's So we're in F sharp minor uh, and it starts on C sharp. So the five and what we do is we go five, six, seven, five, six, seven, one, five, six, seven, Five six seven one three five six seven five six seven one three four five six seven and so on so and then it repeats um, I hope you got that I have no idea whether this is comprehensible or not uh, but I'm too too lazy to uh, try to explain this any better uh, basically it's a repeating pattern throughout the track um, and the cello is doing exactly the same, but just with a different line. So um, it goes la da 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 da, and then up again to la, and just repeats the same. Uh, the first viola comes in here and is doing a very similar line to the cello. Um, starts ba, da, da, ba, 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 ba. slightly different cello obviously goes lower goes down beyond what the viola can play uh, but with all three of these lines the key element to them is that even though individually they are repeating all throughout the song uh, none of them are of the same length uh, meaning that none of these repetitions happen at the same time which is kind of crucial because it, it means really that there's always something new happening there's always something uh, some randomness going on within these repetitions um, yeah and that's kind of that's kind of the magic that's the secret sauce in this uh, the violins are kind of the same they come in later um, and just I'll, they have a quite distinctive sound from the rest but I, I'll get into that in a little bit, but uh, what you can see 
is that the second violin comes in first and it has four a four note re repeated pattern so even just four notes and then it repeats and repeats and then the first violin comes in again four note repeating pattern uh, and that's kind of it of course when I'm writing this I set these parameters for myself and I try out this randomness the where where it sounds beautiful when it hits and of course of course then, then I tweak it a little bit you know this you know first I found these lines and I made the lines in a way that they would repeat randomly in a nice sounding way but even then as we get further into the song um, I found little spots here and there especially uh, sort of when we reach the climax and and towards the end then you know I, I do alter those parameters slightly to to just help us with the with the arc of the song really um, the key difference between the violins and the rest of the orchestra is that the rest of the orchestra are just playing straight notes they're holding them uh, the dynamics of every note or the dynamics of an individual note is the same it's just bah, uh, whereas the violins I can zoom in here a little bit um, yeah here we go so you can see the dynamic markings here. First of all, um, it goes from nothing to mezzo piano back down to nothing on every single note plays played. So it creates this uh, wave effect. Um, so it's more like whereas the other notes are just straight, like ba. These are bah. and you can hear that quite clearly in the song. I'll just give you an example when the just before the f uh, second violins come in for the first time. So you can hear all the other strings playing straight notes. And now the violins come in with these waves on top. And dies out in between same when the first violins come in and that repeats this this pattern repeats uh, all throughout all throughout the track uh, what they're also doing is you can see uh, sultasto I've talked about that before is uh, basic well everyone else is playing flotando as well which is when you have a very light uh, bow movement so it's sort of just barely brushing the string um, creating this airiness very soft sound and sultasto is when you play it close to the bridge or on the bridge uh, which has a softer sound uh, a quieter sound than when in a normal bowing position um, but the key element here is that uh, is the vibrato and they're following like I wrote here violins keep dynamic hairpin that's the wave dynamic that here uh, hairpin and vibrato shapes are shown throughout so the vibrato follows uh, the dynamic shape so it goes from no vibrato to slight vibrato and then back down to no vibrato on every single note um, and as you can see, uh, only the basses are actually playing the one. All of the other parts are doing the offbeat, are on the three. So it's sustained notes here, and then they come on the three again. So the bass always has the one, and it's the only one. Um, and that is pretty much it for the strings. They like I said, I tweak the parameters a little bit as we get further into the song and as the dynamics go back down, uh, I gradually sort of fade out the bass. You can see here, these are the dynamic markings fading into nothingness again. Um, and yeah, and, and just letting the soft violin uh, wave textures uh, finish the song. 
Um, uh, yeah, I think we can move on. The next element is kind of, uh, yeah, it's kind of a combination of, uh, I have this Juno 106 synthesizer right next to me and it is responsible for both of these sounds here. Let's listen to them. Oh, well, we can listen to them separately and then together. First, we just have a simple bass. Can make it a little bit louder for you. Um, and that's just a very standard sub bass. Uh, and what it does is that it just gives you this extra oomph. You can you can really feel it in the song when it when it hits. It just adds this extra it's been building and again i'm building from below like i've talked about before we can you can see my markings here i got basses cellos violas uh, violins and in this build up just one extra element in the build is to bring in this extra bass so you can hear this, the strings before the bass comes in and see if you can notice it when the synth bass hits decent headphones you should be able to hear that um, and what it what happens at the same time is that uh, I do this I bring in this key type element here which is from the same synth um, and together they're kind of a combination like I said so the keys are just playing the tenths or the thirds, if you prefer, of the bass. It's just doing the, the bass, the, yeah, and the keys are doing the tenths. And again, when these hits, again, it's just an extra element in this build. Uh, you can hear it, I'll do the same thing, play the strings before, then you can hear it when it enters. it you can see again when the it's kind of nice to look at the stems like this because you can very clearly see the dynamic shape of the entire piece rise and fall with the strings here um, and as they fall you can see the bass sort of fades out as well and the keys also um, the only thing left to talk about is the special effects and I'm quite uh, I'm quite fond of these um, the song opens on this and these are samples that were made for me by my friend uh, Thorstein Eyfjörth. Um, he, for for my soundtrack for Haula. Um, yeah, he made me all kinds of sounds. He's a he's an incredible artist. Um, he does everything. And one of the things he does is sound design. And he got me some field recordings. Uh, I think this is just wind blowing through some factory or so. I don't even remember at this point. I should have asked him before recording this video, but here we are. Um, he gave me this. Yeah, he recorded this somewhere and then ran it through something. I don't know. <laughs> Um, but it sounds cool and I, I brought it up with the way I do a lot of things I'll just bring whatever samples I can get my hands on put it in on my sampler which can be contact if you're familiar with contact or uh, I use cycles sometimes as well or, or whatever you, type of sampler you can get and if, if you're experimenting it's the easiest way to sound design is just take whatever audio file you have of anything you've made in your life and drop it into a sampler, play it on a MIDI keyboard and see what happens. And that's exactly what I did with this sample. That's basically how I <laughs> wrote the soundtrack 
for Jaula. Um, and here we have the, this is the original sample. And if I play middle C on the keyboard, this is how it sounds. And this might sound familiar to you if you've heard the song. And um, I thought this was cool. And, and, and I like that it has a certain tone. And this tone is actually what, because this is literally tone uh, when I place the middle C on the keyboard and that note is F sharp and the song is in F sharp uh, and I chose F sharp for the song because uh, of, <laughs> of the sample being in F sharp uh, and I decided to add the minor third to it and see what happens and then it sounds like this if I play it And that's pretty much exactly how the song starts. Uh, now we're gonna listen to how the song actually starts and it's gonna be the same thing. other thing you may have noticed creeping in there below uh, which will continue to rise is another uh, element that I borrowed from my score for Jaula uh, and these are these string samples that I made with Carl Pasca um, if you're familiar with you should be familiar with him if you have followed me and especially if you followed Olavur Arnolds as well. He plays in basically everything for, well, for pretty much every musician I know. Um, we recorded these samples for my score to Jaula and I wanted something disturbing and that's kind of a key element in this song. Uh, and maybe I can just talk about that a little bit now. So you can see, again, if you just look at the waveform here, you can see the build, so it starts off, the SFX channel here is, these are these kind of eerie, disturbing elements, uh, and the orchestra, and they start, start out strong, and the strings start out quiet, and it's a little bit, you know, it's, it's breaking through this discomfort. There's no concept or anything that I had, but I just wanted to create this, this simple story arc of, of discomfort, of weirdness, of, yeah, but then, then you can be really cheesy about it, then the beauty sort of breaks out of it. Uh, and that's kind of what happens in the end. Uh, it's not entirely fair because I actually think these, these samples, this, especially this, uh, this wind field recording is incredibly beautiful. And that's why I kind of, I sneaked it in again at the very end to sort of finish the finish it off with the strings. I think it makes the strings sound so much beautiful to have this ambience with it. But especially with the the string samples from that I made with with Carl. Uh, which we can hear somewhere around here, yeah. So the, the wind recording from Thorstein is dying out, but you can hear these screeching violin sounds. It's actually viola that we recorded, but they get higher in pitch and higher in pitch and higher. And I'm qu quite pleasantly surprised with how realistic it sounds. It really sounds like, to me, it sounds like a bunch of uh, violin players who are just gradually um, going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher with the note that they're playing. Uh, that is an illusion. Um, that is simply me. Um, I put in like a pitch shifter plugin and then I literally 
just you know if it started out in the middle i let's let's pretend this is not the volume automation let's pretend this is the pitch shifter plugin and then i simply did that pretty much i think i you know i i mess around with it a little bit and then does that and then it goes down again uh, and somehow and it does start to when it got really high it started to distort but i kind of liked the distortion i didn't need it to sound completely realistic um, but i was pleasantly surprised with how realistic it sounded nonetheless and um and it really kind of in in parts you i feel like it's it's part of the part of the band here it's part of the orchestra it's like another violin section on top which I thought was kind of cool. Um, we can listen to a little bit of everything together here when we look after the violins come in, just to hear all of it. You can hear the screeching fake violins up on top. the song on your own um, I could go on and on and on and on but um, I think that's good for now um, yeah let me know what you think and let me know if you have any specific questions I feel like there was something else that I wanted to say I'm sure there was I always I can talk you into an oblivion but um, let's just call it for now oh yeah i was gonna mention the orchestra of course the orchestra is the reykjavik recording orchestra conducted by my friend victor orre Ortensson. um such a beautiful performance um and we recorded the whole album in in just just three or four hours and um yeah uh, really fortunate to have worked with them and so happy with with the result hope you like it too See you next time.